Daniel Machine Shop. It's a kind of a damp, hot, muggy Monday morning. We just got back from Canada, a big steam show up there for a week, part of a week, and uh, had a great time. And uh, ran across several of my channel viewers and had a chance to talk to them and uh, see what they were doing and what they were interested in, and uh, it was a really great time. And uh, I want to thank you all for commenting on the channel and uh, uh, for all the uh, views and uh, uh, subscriptions. Uh, we got some progress made on the steam engine, but we had to interrupt ourselves a couple of times for some actual paying jobs. Um, you'll see, I got the uh, crankshaft apart. And, uh, we got a fire going in the boiler here, and uh, it's drafting pretty well. Uh, my fireman just got here, and <laughs> we're going to do some machine work, and uh, so stay tuned. You can see this, but that's moved about a quarter of an inch, so we're home free. All I got to do is have enough strength to pull that the rest of the way off. Oh, I heated it up some more, and it comes about a quarter of a turn at a time.
finally getting close to the end on this. Just came to the end of the end of the puller. Hot dog. I was able to move the eccentric down the shaft far enough to get the uh, the crossbars here <coughs> uh, solidly under the hub. So we're pressing against the hub. Uh, it's still a little bit warm. I'm not going to try to use a lot of heat on it. I'm just going to give it a shot cold and see what happens. We'll probably go to 20 tons and if it doesn't go... Oh, look at that. days you get lucky. The next shove will be to get the eccentric off the shaft and it should come off fairly easy. I was able to move it back. I cleaned up the shaft just a little bit here. Here's the bare crankshaft. <clears throat> I put the other counterweight on it. It's, for some reason, they, this counterweight had been taken off. And uh, it has some major problems here. You can see this keyway is actually bent, where it's twisted. The end of the shaft where the gear was on there. It must have really been cracking and something locked up in the gearing somehow and it just twisted the end of that crank. So if and how much the rest of the crank is bent or sprung or damaged, that's the next step and try to figure out whether we can straighten it, repair it, or make another crank shaft. Uh, if you make another crank, I think we can make it to use the original counterweights interesting thing. This is a Kohler lawnmower crank. This is over a hundred years old. <laughs> Nothing changes. I'm having to interrupt myself just a little bit uh, on the steam engine project. These, This is a little pile of thread change gears for the South Bend lathe and we're missing a couple of them. Uh, we're missing a 52 and a 64 and uh, one of them is for a 13 thread and there's a lot of half inch 13 special bolts that we got to make up for it. So I wanted to get this uh, the lathe set up so we can do that. So we decided to make the gears that we're missing. They're uh, a 16 diametrical pitch gear, half inch wide, 5 8 bore, 3 16 keyway. Pretty simple. So, uh, Tom made up uh, an arbor uh, that we're going to use in the dividing head, and this will go right in a uh, uh, three quarter, actually, it's a, a Cat 50. 
three quarter uh, end mill holder. And then uh, this is this diameter here is five eighths exactly. And uh, we put a Woodruff key in it. And uh, we got a couple of blanks made up. And uh, they're keyed. So I'll go right on here. nice and tight and uh, made this collar with a little uh, relief for the Woodruff key because it sticks out beyond them a little bit and uh, cut those threads on the little lathe too by hand and uh, so what we'll do now is indicate this into the south bend lathe the, the arbor and turn the OD of the gear blank to what it's supposed to be and uh, according to the gear formula the uh, 52 teeth tooth gear has got to be 3 inches uh, 375 and the 64 has got to be 4 inch 125 so we'll get those two blanks or we'll get this one blank cut down and then we'll put it in the dividing head Facing off the gear blank, which is just a piece of mild steel, four inches in diameter that I had the local steel warehouse slice off a couple of on their big cutoffs. Uh, so I've got to face this down to a uh, half inch thick.
There it is. Inscribed on this indicator is J.H. Bolette, Beverly, Massachusetts. No patent date, but it's probably back there. It's within a thousandth or so. Okay, the Woodruff key was turning around in there, causing problems. I made this pushing kind of big and OD because I thought it would kind of uh, help the rigidity of this 5 8 arbor a little bit. We got a flange nut here. Another thing you need to know if you're going to be cutting gear teeth is what uh, cutter to use. And this is a bigger one that I found in my toolbox. Uh, I thought you could see it a little bit better. I shined it up. Uh, all the all the information that you need for a cutter is uh, stamped right on it. And in case you can't see it, here's what this one says. It's a number three uh, cutter. They come in sets of eight. And the number three uh, will cut from 35 to 54 teeth. And this is for a 10 pitch. The, gear that we're uh, the pitch that we're using on the gears that we're making is actually 16. This is for a 10 pitch. And they also give you here uh, something they're calling D prime plus F which is actually the whole depth that you figure out from the formula and uh, I ran that out and it's true for a 10 pitch it is 216 thousandths so that's the amount that you would feed down into your gear to get uh, the depth of the tooth plus this also includes some clearance so that the teeth don't bottom out in the valleys um, now there's also, uh, in, in a lot of the older uh, shop manuals, you'll find some uh, numbers in between here from one to eight. There's like, uh, I think there's like six half sizes that cover a more narrow range of teeth to get a more accurate uh, uh, profile on them. Also you'll see on here usually, although this one does not specify, uh, you'll see a 14 and a half or a 20 degree pressure angle which has to do with the shape of the involute and uh, most all really old stuff is 14 and a half. The 20 degree pressure angle is more for uh, you know modern high-speed transmissions and things like that. Okay, now we got the uh, dividing head set up on the 1885 milling machine. This is the spacer you might have remembered in some of the earlier videos that I made to get it up uh, to match the height of the um, tailstock. So we've got the arbor in there and we've got the blank on the arbor. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit how we figured out what the uh, what the diameter of that should be. We had some lathe uh, gears, so first thing you need to do is figure out what the diametrical pitch of this particular set of gears is. They'll all be the same if they mesh uh, with each other. Now this particular gear happens to be 46 teeth, so there is a wonderful set of formulas when they standardized these gear teeth things years ago. And uh, 
and it works like this. In order to find the diametrical pitch of any gear, you take the number of teeth that it is plus two and divide it by the diameter. Now that seems too simple to be true, but it's, it is true. We got 46 teeth here, so we add two to it, makes it 48, and divide by the diameter, which on this particular gear is exactly three inches. It comes out exactly 16. So the diametrical pitch of all the gears on the, the lathe, uh, the stack of gears for thread cutting, are a 16 pitch. Okay? So now the next problem is we have to figure out what diameter we need to make the blank in order to cut a 64 tooth, I mean, uh, yeah, 64 tooth gear with this same diametrical pitch of 16. So you just work, solve the formula around for the diameter, and it's going to be the number of uh, teeth that you want plus 2 divided by the diametrical pitch, which is the 16. So 64 plus 2 is 66, divided by 16 is exactly 4 and an eighth, 4.125. So that's what the diameter of this blank is. And that's for a 64 tooth gear. Next step is to set up the dividing head. Now, just like before when I was uh, telling you about setting up a lathe for cutting threads, it's, it's almost the same deal. Uh, where the lathe had a constant which was actually the pitch of the lead screw and on the little lathe it was an 8 pitch. The constant here is the gear ratio of the dividing head and most all dividing heads are 40 to 1. That means if you spun this around exactly 40 times you get exactly one turn over here. So that's the constant you have to work with, 40 to 1. So in order to find out if we're going to divide this blank into 64 teeth, the formula is you take the 40, which is the constant for this dividing head, over 64, which is the number of teeth that you want, and you get some fraction. And you can play with this fraction. You can reduce it or you can multiply it up or whatever until you get a number on the bottom that's equal to a number of holes that you have. Now, this particular dividing head has got a set of plates. This is a complete set of plates for this dividing head, I think. And they're all numbered. You look at them and you think they're not, but if you look really close, you can see this one is 47, 49, 51, 53, 54, 57. So you've got to find one of those numbers that will is the same as the bottom of your fraction here. So it just so happens that the 24 there is a row here on this one that is 24. So we're in there. So the top number is the number of holes. So in order to make 64 teeth, we're going to go, we're going to advance each tooth 15 holes on a 24 hole circle. So that's the bottom most inward row is right here is 24 teeth. So in order to make sure that we only go 15 holes at a time, there's this cool little gauge. And I've already got it set to go 15 holes. So if we, if we start, we'll start at the top row. It doesn't really matter, but that's where I'm going to go. So this is adjustable. It's, all it is is like a little gauge so that you can, you don't have to count each hole separately. So I have it set for 15 holes, so it's exactly 15 holes from there over to this side of the gauge. And then when you get ready to set the next one, you run it, this around and you come over here 
again another 15 holes and there's plenty of ways to screw this up you gotta I like to move this just before I make the move some people like to move the gauge just after they make the move but that's basically where you're at and if you do that 64 times each time you cut a tooth you'll come back around exactly in the last tooth and we did that on the, uh, the other gear well Tom's gonna do this one uh, we've got steam up and we're just about ready to go so we'll put this in the center hole to start with um, and we'll put this up here so we're ready to cut our first tooth and ready to make the first uh, increment this is a break which is a very good idea to tighten down each time although this particular dividing head is a big heavy clunky dividing head it's a Van Norman and it's got no virtually no backlash in it at all but it's a good idea to tighten the, tighten the uh, break anyway so we'll be back in a second Okay, so now we got to set the depth of cut, and this is the formula for that. And for a number 16 pitch gear, the whole depth of cut, including the clearance, which is a little bit beyond the depth, so that the tip of the teeth don't uh, end up hitting in the valley, uh, is this constant. 2.157 divided by the pitch, which is 16 on all our gears. So if you, if you divide that out, you get 135,000. But we discovered that on our first gear that we did, uh, we would like to have a little bit more depth to match the other gears. So we're going to add another 10,000 to that and make it 145. So we'll crank the table up 145,000. And this this mic head is like, you got to have your magnifying glass and your flashlight because it's just very hard to see, very tiny on these old machines. This actually works out pretty good with two people because one person can run the dividing head and not be distracted by anything else. And then the other person can do everything else. Security. 40, 45, uh, lock that. Okay. Turn on the And we also discovered that we could run the machine a little faster and the table feed a little faster than what we started out at. So we're set to go with our first tooth. Holes. 
Round for the next move. Fighting the break. Engage the seed. so you can see what it looks like.
Okay. Okay. Okay, last pass down the last tooth after 64 ways to screw up. Four feet here.